What is going on, y'all? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to write Hello World to the screen in x86 assembly. So this is part of my mega series where we go all the way from hardware, transistors, electricity, all the way up to stuff like AI and graphics shaders and RTX, all that complicated stuff that you all know and love and use your computers for. So this is in the middle. We've already covered hardware. Now we're moving on to assembly. And I should mention, you don't have to watch my hardware videos if you already know hardware, because this is actually the first in the assembly section. So you can kind of start here and watch forward if you already know how the hardware works. But if you don't go to the playlist, it'll just really start from transistors and then work everything up. Now, I will say I chose x86 assembly specifically because it's still the biggest instruction set in terms of desktop computers by market share. Mobile computers like your phone, my run arm but i don't even know how you can write a assembler source inside a mobile phone so as for desktop it's still x86 um if you have a mac or something like that then you might not be able to follow this tutorial you'll have something known as probably arm but to check that just type uname m and by the way i'm on linux mainly because windows is just more complicated with installing the visual c compiler linux just kind of has everything by default especially ubuntu so anyways Uname-M shows you your instruction set, and if you see something other than this, then uh, I guess you can watch it for fun, but it won't work on your machine. So for those of you who do have this, let's continue. First thing we need to do is create a file, just like every other programming uh, language. There's a specific file extension associated with assembly, and that is, uh, well, first of all, we're just going to create our name, so hello, and then the file extension is .s, so capital S, that's the extension. Now, if it were just a simple print hello world, then there you go. That is the video. But of course not. Uh, assembly is more complicated, mainly because we're kind of directly talking to the CPU. There's no compiling. There's no translating, no interpreting. We're just telling the CPU exactly what we want. So the CPU only deals with stuff that's either inside RAM or inside registers. And what we're going to do in the first section is define what's going to be inside RAM. So we're going to do section, RO data, and this just stands for read-only data. So we don't want the CPU to kind of mess with this section, and you'll see why. So we're going to define a label, and this label just basically says, uh, here is what this RAM is, because the CPU doesn't know what label is. By the way, this is purely for us. The CPU just sees everything as numbers. Uh, so inside this label, we're just going to call a little ASCII Z here and then we're just going to pass in our actual string so this kind of directive just says okay here define inside ram this string called hello world but the cpu again still doesn't know what this is it just sees this as a bunch of bytes now let's actually run this so to do that we're going to define another section um and this section will be dot text so that text will notify the assembler hey i want to run this section rather than just displaying data so this is kind of like your data. This is kind of like your instructions. So inside the text section, we need to first define a global directive. So do that and just glob uh, L or global and then underscore start. So this is kind of like main function inside your Java and C programs. At least in Linux, Linux will look for this and then it will start execution at this point. Uh, this start is a label as well. So again, the CPU doesn't know about what start is. It just knows that whatever this instruction, by the way, this all of these labels will get replaced with actual addresses once we assemble. So uh, this is just purely for us. First instruction we're gonna run is a move instruction. And this will move the literal one into RAX. So RAX is a register. Now I know people, don't really like at and syntax, but I will say a lot of Linux is developed on at and syntax and Unix for that matter. So I'm just going to keep the culture and write in at and syntax. Maybe if I jump to Windows or some other thing, or maybe if I just get bored, I'll just do Intel syntax. But it's pretty much the same thing. I personally like Intel a little bit better, but I can see why at and is more explicit. So there's that. Uh, by the way, this stands for a comment. So you can type whatever you want in here and it won't care. First of all, what are we actually doing with this instruction? We're moving one to RAX, but what does that mean? Well, think about how the CPU runs your code. It doesn't know what you want to do. It just does stuff that you have to tell it to do. 
So what's controlling your computer? That, of course, is the operating system. And the core part of the operating system is called the kernel. So the kernel is kind of like the big boss here. So the kernel does everything related to hardware, including printing Tango World. This just tells the kernel, I'm going to run the right syscall. So by the way, these syscalls are kind of kernel instructions. So this thing, select the right syscall. And this right syscall is pretty generic. It tells the kernel to write anything to any file. So not just your screen. You can write Hello World to a file that you describe or anything else. You can probably even write to a USB since Linux has device files or something like that. But specifically, we want it to print to the screen. So that's what this next instruction is for. The next instruction, we're going to move one again. But notice we're going to move it to a different register this time. But this time, we're going to move it to RDI. And this will say, OK, the kernel asks what file you want to write it to. We're going to say, write it to a file descriptor 1, which corresponds to standard output. And standard output. If you didn't mess around with the standard output and just left it alone, usually it's your screen. But of course, there's ways to redirect it. So it isn't always your screen, but just it's your screen for now. Next instruction, we're going to, again, kernel will ask again, OK, so you want to write something to your screen, but what is it? We're going to load effective address. So that's what this instruction is for. And we're going to load our actual screen here. Keep in mind, we're loading the address because the register can't fit all of these bytes in. It can only fit eight bytes. That's all a 64-bit register is, eight bytes. So we have more than eight bytes inside our string, so we have to load the address. And that's where we specify the label, because the label is the address, like I said, and it's relative to the instruction pointer. So this is basically PC, but x86 calls it RIP for some reason. I guess it's instruction pointer. And then what we're going to load this string into, or I guess the address, RSI. So that is, of course, the uh, sequence. Now, notice I just didn't, I, I went from RDX to RDI to RSI. This is kind of a weird um, pattern here. Like, this is a weird order. Why don't we do RAX, RBX, RCX? Well, there's a specific reason. It's called calling conventions. We'll get into that later on in the series. But for now, just trust, because otherwise, the kernel won't know where to look for. So this basically just says load the actual location of our screen. Notice how I'm calling it every line, because assembly is very cryptic. You can't really write self-describing code. What does this mean? Maybe you can guess. What does this mean? Again, if you don't know what this is, is at first glance, you're just thinking we're loading numbers into registers. But there's a deeper meaning, and that's what these comments are for. So the last instruction we're going to do is we are going to load the length of the string into uh, our dx so the length of the string is 14 if you count here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 uh okay i might have counted it wrong but basically this is 14 13 12 11 10 9 8 okay yeah you get the point so there's 14 and what we're going to do again is load it into rdx so load the length of and why do we do this? Well, because the kernel, again, the kernel is basically telling the CPU, OK, look for this label. And then then what? Again, that's kind of the problem. We load the label where the address is. But how, how far do we read? Do we read until the end of time? Do we read until the end of RAM? No. We tell the CPU we only want the first 14 bytes after this address, or I guess including and after this address to be printed. So that's why this is necessary. And this is a common pattern in C as well. So when we get to C in the series, you'll see a lot of times we do the exact same thing. We load uh, the length as a pointer and then the uh, length as well. So now we're going to actually call tell the uh, kernel to actually run it. So that is just the syscall instruction. So that's just basically saying, OK, I have everything prepared for you. Do your thing. OK, so the kernel did its thing. But now we also want to return zero. That will indicate to the user that nothing bad happened. So just like in Java, uh, I guess Java doesn't really have it because it's a void function. But in C and C++, you usually return zero to indicate it's successful. So let's do that as well in assembly. So the first thing we're going to do, once again, the kernel will say, what do you want me to run today? Well, we're going to let you run the syscall 
number 60 and this is the exit syscall. So run exit syscall. And then the kernel will say, okay, the exit syscall takes in some parameters, notably the return value. So the status code. And of course we want it to be zero. So status code is zero. And then finally, we have every ingredient we need. Let's tell the kernel to cook stuff up. This call, and there we go. That is the whole program. So now we're going to see that this file that we just written stuff to, it's assembler source, but it's also just ASCII text. And we all know that CPU has no idea what ASCII text is. So we need to assemble it first. And Linux has this handy tool called GCC that does exactly that. It's actually a compiler that compiles C code, but it can assemble stuff as well. So we're just gonna run GCC with a parameter called no std lib. That's because uh, GCC assumes you're writing in C. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to control C. Uh, Vim habits there. Uh, so no standard lib basically says, we don't want all of that bloat that comes with the standard library because we're writing directly in assembly. So that's just what that means. Now we're gonna just pass in our actual source file. There we go, nothing popped up that's unusual and you might wonder now what well you could have specified output file by doing dash o and then maybe something like hello but by default gcc puts your executable inside a file called a.out so let's check to make sure that a.out is actually what it is and you can see it is indeed a elf 64-bit executable x86 um and the sysv is the calling convention so this is kind of the system five uh Unix stuff, but that's coming again in later episodes. It's linked, dynamically linked with the interpreter. And yeah, so this, if you see something like this, that indicates the CPU is ready to run. So why don't we give it a go? Let's run the instruction. Boom, hello world with a new line. So that is it for this video. So now you can kind of see hello world in x86 assembly is kind of complicated, um, but it is really the most direct form of telling the CPU what to do. So if you really want fine control of your program, you can't get better than this. Like assembly is just the most low level language besides machine code, but who likes to program in binary? It gets hard. So again, assembly is probably the best you can get. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. In the next few videos, we'll see all the advanced assembly stuff, including like calling functions, pushing the stack, all of that. And yeah, see you until the next one.